<laughs> Which one? <laughs> it's not showing. Okay, um, apparently we're back live again. So anyway, welcome back and uh, just waiting for the camera to um, catch up with everything else. So um, welcome along to uh, Vicky Munro, Chair of our Hariri Community Board. So you can hear me okay, Vicky? I yeah, can, Gary. Good. Excellent. Okay, we'll just double check that everything is working and yeah, we should be right now. Um, okay, so uh, welcome. Um, we're going to move on to item 7.1, which is retiring elected members valedictory speeches. So just acknowledging the service that, that you have done um, and the, the, that you're retiring from your role as chair of the Ahuriri Community Board. So thank you very much for that. Um, and just when you're ready, if you'd just like to start your speech, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. Okay, Gary. Um, yeah, I, I, I first would like to thank everyone. And it's very difficult to remember um, and make sure you include all the names over the nine years because it's been a it's been a, um, a, a long and enlightening time in my life. But just like to thanks, pass thanks to all retired and present councillors, staff and buddy councillors, and special thanks to the residents of our awesome Artery Reward. So um, I start with a sense of place. The Artery Reward, a community of five towns and rural farming, from flat plains, dairy to high country pastoral merino runs. Our towns have very different historical backgrounds. Ohau, with its majestic lakes and mountains, a winter playground ski field right at our back door. Enhanced, enhanced by its native fauna, the envy of the lower rainfall towns. A Maramar, a thriving town, welcoming, welcoming the tourists and locals crossroads to many adventures. Oda Matata, a service town for the development of the hydro schemes creating a water playground for visitors to spend their leisure time up the lakes. Two uh, hours. Vicky, yep. uh, Vicky, sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, you, you, um, <laughs> your speech was in the way of the camera. So, um, yeah, just, yeah just, I see that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah it's that's, that's Zooming protocol, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's one way to hide when you make a speech, but, yeah. but sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I just didn't, wasn't sure whether you realised that. But anyway, no, I didn't. Please, Thank you for that. So Kurao is a historical railways, the bridges that cross the mighty Waitiki River, a town to service the local rural community. Plunkett Preschool and now a modern primary school. Duntroon, a town that has so much to give history and the future side by side, also servicing the local communities with the growing dairy industry. Highlights, introduction, getting to know the people, the residents of Dunfermline area, following the new boundary changes for the Artery Reward. Witnessing the sheer passion from all the five towns, residents creating their own sense of place. To be honest, I'm still with the mindset, why can't we come in with our tractors people and just get the job done? Now it's health and safety, compliance and rules, but in saying that we all know rules are made to protect us. It's always been a pleasure to work with the Waitaki District Council officers, staff and councillors to complete many projects in the Artery Reward. Cynthia thinks it's been a privilege to be part of this team. The low times belonging, well, we all belong to the carefree baby boomers era when we had no war, world wars, depressions and we were able to play in the street in safety. Then we had a pandemic, learnt Zoom meeting protocols social distancing, mask vaccine and rat tests, a new experience. In the nine years on the board, I lost my best mate, husband, Ronnie. We had board members resign and new enthusiastic board members join the team. The Ohau fires was a serious loss to that community and meeting in the town after the fire was sobering experience. The residents and homeowners were safe, but their strength and resilience was a lesson to us all. 
The passing of the Arterary Councillor Ross McRoby was a huge loss to our combined Waitaki District Council, Ota Matata and the Arterary Ward. His fresh new approach was inspiring and exciting going forward. The floods just kept coming. So much damage and so disappointing to businesses, homes and recreation facilities. No such damage have I known in the town's, in the town's historic histories such as a Mariman Otomatata has happened before. Our artery ward re residents are a resilient bunch of people supporting each other through difficult times and helping each other. It's been a pleasure and a life's highlight to be part of the artery ward team. Wishing you all good health and successful decision making, a new team with fresh new approaches. Sincere regards, me. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you very much, Vicky. Uh, thank you for your service to the Hariri Ward. Thank you for being uh, as, as available as you are. Thank you for being a voice for that part of our district. Um, and you know, we will we will miss you. So um, hopefully you and I get to catch up uh, sometimes when we're up there and, and you'll catch up with others as well. But uh, yeah, wish you all the best on your retirement from this particular part of public life. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. And you're welcome to stay on the Zoom if you want to for, to hear okay. the others. Um, so, yeah, we'll leave that to, to you whether you do that. Right. Um, I don't know whether the, you sort of batting order uh, looks like Councillor King and like you're ready to go. So we'll hand over to you. I'm not seeing my head. No, we're, we're going to have to. <laughs> it, it does feel like a, a speech you should give standing up, but yeah, anyway, unfortunately, the camera doesn't work. I'll do it sitting down. Thank you. Um, it, was, it was while working in Papua New Guinea that I wondered if maybe I should try and become a councillor. I had been asked several times earlier if I would stand, and I'd always said no because I didn't have the time that I knew it would require. So in 2013, when the two sitting councillors were standing, weren't standing in the Coradale Ward, I got myself nominated. Seven stood, and it turned out to be a lively contest. All quite new to me, of course. Sharon Price and I were elected, and it was a shame that a few months later, Sharon had to pull out for health reasons. I had purposely come to council without any real agenda. Of course, I supported keeping rates to a minimum, growing our district, improving services, all of those things, but all in a balanced way. I have tried to keep an open mind when approaching any given topic and been prepared to accept and take ownership of the majority decision made, whether I agreed or not. And I think we've been particularly good at that in this last term. Thank you to the people of Corridale for firstly electing me, then leaving me pretty much undisturbed to make my own decisions on the way through. It has been an honour and a privilege to represent you. I think the oath we take at the beginning of each triennium to work for the whole district is very important. We have not had and do not have a rural-urban divide, as some think. And long may that continue. Early in my first term, Mayor Gary asked if I would be the assets chair. And I had no idea what that entailed, but I said yes anyway. <laughs> I've got to thank Neil Jorgensen for helping me through that early bit. Then, as time went on, we were actually able to help each other, as all good relationships should. I'm grateful also to the Young Farmers Club training I had when I was younger. It has helped me immensely. I remember also the family debates we had around the, table, the kitchen table going way back. We had some very robust discussions with strict rules, especially about, especially about waiting your turn. So nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. Often meetings go quite straightforwardly, others not. Do you remember the group from Ohau who came and gave the assets committee a real wind up? 
Councillor Peter Garvin's points of order used to scare me. <laughs> Overall, this facet of the role has been pretty good. Not long into my first term, we were issued with iPads, all a bit new for me. Some councillors weren't at all happy about moving from paper. I heard Councillor Mel say one day that some information was in Dropbox. And I, I thought to myself, Dropbox, what, what's that, I wonder? Anyway, I learned to use Dropbox, and then we've successfully moved to LG Hub and Convene and a lot of other options. And I've actually got to quite like my iPad. My three terms have been under Mayor Gary's leadership. I have admired at your, the energy that you have, Gary, and the dedication you show through the number of events that you attend. You diffuse and correct a lot of stuff on Facebook and just don't get the praise you should. Alex Palmley is my third chief executive to work with. All three have had their strengths. In the last year, though, we have really delved a whole lot deeper into so many facets. Transformation. We should always strive to do everything better. Governance review. There are always better ways of doing things, or in fact, of doing everything. Future for local government. This scares me a little. I was always most comfortable discussing water and roads and parks and reserves. Economic development. We really did find out what drives our district. Property, especially the airport, and my pet topic, country halls. It will take a, a while to progress all of these things, and that remains a real challenge for the next council to do so. I've really enjoyed working with council staff. I was told when I started not to be disturbing them too much. I understand that and hope I haven't. I believe we have helped each other and most importantly, have had a bit of fun on the way through. So now I'm ready for the next stage of my life. I'm quite proud of myself for having been a district councillor. I plan to play a few bowls, more bowls, in fact, catch a few fish, play my bagpipes a little better, I hope, see a little bit more of the world and follow my family's endeavours. I'll miss this place. All the best, Waitaki. Thank you, Bill. And um, yeah, again, we will miss you. And thank, thank you for the kind words you've said uh, about myself and, and others too. Um, yeah, we did throw you in the deep end a wee bit, straight into chair of the, you know, the committee that looks after the, most of the, the budget within council, uh, most of the spending. Um, but you've been very reliable, very able, and uh, appreciated the, the fact that you've been a solid part of the team all the way through and can always be depended on to add some wise words into discussions when they need them most. So thank you and all the very best for your bowling, bagpiping and fishing uh, as you, you head off to do those things. So yeah, look forward to catching up for a beer along the way too. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wallstein. Yes, thank you, Mayor Kircher. Yeah, and uh, see if I can do as well as my good friend <laughs> Councillor Kingham did. So, just going back, when I first stood for election to council in 2013, I had no expectation of still being here nine years later. Doesn't time fly? I'm not sure if I'm a sucker for punishment or have I enjoyed my time as a councillor. I think the answer is yes. The second, I have enjoyed my time as a councillor the great majority of the time. I stood for election due to an interest in council and encouragement from friends and associates. I thought that I had a fair knowledge of what council was about, but I soon found that I had a lot to learn. 
being appointed as chair of the finance committee was like being thrown in the deep end, sink or swim. <laughs> and uh, the first 18 months was a huge learning curve. I, yeah, I think it took the first annual plan and long-term plan cycle before I felt that I had a good grip on what council was all about. When I look back at those early days and the, and the mysteries of what was then the hub reporting system, I just realized how much more organized and transparent the current financial reporting systems are, and also the huge amount of knowledge I've gained in many areas of council during those nine years. Much of what is done at council is what we say is business as usual, but there have been matters that I've supported on the way through, including um, council having a balanced budget each year as required by regulation, and thanks to Paul and Ian for, for ensuring we, had, we, we achieved that every year. Improved risk reporting and recognition, but it's still a work in progress, more to be done. Progress on the harbour area redevelopment, which is an area close to my heart. Making a decision on Forrester Heights. I think that had been the elephant in the room for, for a long time, for the whole time I had been on council, and I was glad that we finally came to a decision on that. Supporting the extension of the Observatory Hill Retirement Village. Support of the North Otago Irrigation Company and Kura Duntree Irrigation. Development of the Observation Trail, uh, just, to, just to add that I was on the uh, Joint Committee for nine years, especially including this, the new section from Sailors Cutting to the Ben, ben the Benmore Dam. A great ride for anybody who likes riding. Gaining uh, local government funding authority funding, and I'm pleased I pushed for going to the higher borrowing level, has been required as we found we needed. And finally, uh, development of close relations with the Renaka at Mo Moiraki Marae. Um, but there have been some disappointments from along the way, hasn't all been uh, achievements, and my disappointments including, I think my biggest frustration has been the increase in central government interference in local government, just think three waters, based on their belief that Wellington knows better than the regions and all decisions should be made in Wellington, followed by what I consider was a weak response by a representative body, LGNZ, the memorandum of understanding signed with government but never advised to councils, to not oppose three waters still annoys me immensely. I didn't manage to achieve some pro local projects that I was keen on, such as reopening Gra uh, Graves Track and the track from the Cape around to Bushy Beach and to restore the town views from Lookout Point. You might see me again at annual, annual plan submission time. <laughs> but lastly, COVID, and sadly, this had a negative impact on much of, the, of, the, of this term of council, but we managed. To conclude, I've enjoyed my time as a councillor and I express my thanks and appreciation as follows. To Gary, as a mayor who has allowed council to work in a relaxed and inclusive manner and to develop into a very good team. My fellow councillors, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed spending much time with you all and I've really enjoyed our inclusive group approach to our roles. I think we've been a very good team. Chief Executive Alex, um, who has bought, as Bill has said, third, third CEO, but Alex has bought a new, a, a new and welcome breath of fresh air to the role. So, and the executive leadership team, you've been great to work with, but I must give special points, a special thanks to Paul and Ian for their financial reporting and advice, and also to Ainsley for her guidance along the way. And finally, I must thank the voters of the Omri Ward for ticking my name for three elections in a row. I hope that I've lived up to your expectations when you did so. So my best wishes to those of you who are standing for re-election. I hope that if re-elected, the next council triennium will provide as much satisfaction and at times fun as this has. So the time has come for me to move on to other interests, including family, travel, and my outdoor physical pursuits before I grow too old. But I will still retain an interest in council as an interested observer. So thank you. <laughs> And thank you, Colin. And um, yeah, you're, I mean, th there's a lot of councils would, you know, give a lot to have, uh, you know, even a re to retired accountant, but yeah. an accountant. I mean, you, know, you, you keep saying ex accountant, but yeah. Yeah. we see you very much as the accountant. To have you uh, as uh, leading the Performance Audit and Risk Committee and its predecessors um, has been a very important part of knowing that, you know, we've got a pair of safe hands here. And you've you've been again a really reliable counsellor. Um, 
just acknowledge actually the work that you and Councillor Kingan did as buddy councillors for our Harare Ward. You picked that up uh, almost a year ago. And I know how much the community out there has appreciated both of you doing that extra work. So, so thank you both for that. But Colin, thank you very much for all the work that you have done. Um, and yeah, yeah, when you read out the list of things that have been achieved, it's it's really positive. And you know, it's just things that we've all been involved in in different ways and so on. That it's uh, yeah, really good to hear those things. So all the best to you. Um, yeah, don't go getting knocked out at skiing, snow skiing again, uh, like you did this season. But uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll have lots of other recreational activities that you're getting on with. And um, yeah, wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Gary, for those kind words. And yeah, I'll enjoy my time and all the best to everybody around the room. Thank you. Right, um, one left to go. Deputy Mayor Melanie Tavendale. Tina Koto, Tina Koto, Tina Koto Katoa. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone who's come along today in support and those that are watching online. From outside, I feel like these meetings must be a little bit like watching paint dry. So thank you for sticking with us. Once upon a time, everyone knew me as Mel. Um, nobody ever used my, first, my full name, just Mel, unless I was in trouble and then I was Melanie. However, on the day, the day I got on council, I morphed into Councillor Melanie Tavendale or Deputy Mayor Tavendale Polite, responsible, and respectable. It's crazy what this job does to people. <laughs> I'd like to thank those that have voted for me, supported me, and believed in me. It's been humbling, but I hope I've been able to justify your support. My family have put up with a lot, long supermarket trips because I've been stopped for a yarn, evening meetings, trips away, and copious amounts of reading. Thanks to my husband, Steve, for his support. I'd like to think he knew what he was getting into when he married me, but that may not be 100% true. Josie and Declan, who are both here today, were just two years old and six months old when I started this role. They grew up playing under the council table, being dragged to meetings with a colouring book and pencils to keep them busy. And a big thanks to Ellie, Mandy and Carol, who always knew, who made sure they always knew where to find where the lolly jar was on level two. <laughs> My mum, Jean, as well as Steve's parents, Kay and Lears, have been fantastic supporters and countless times I've offered their babysitting services. My dad has also been called in to babysit on occasion, but I've never quite forgiven him for making Declan busk with a harmonica outside short black with a sign saying he'd been abandoned. <laughs> Cute photos, not great parenting. After nine years, I feel like I'm part of the furniture around here. I'd like to say I've matured somewhat, learned a few lessons, and in my way have made a difference. The role has been nothing short of extraordinary. Bizarre at times, but extraordinary. I've really enjoyed the challenge, the opportunities, and the personal growth. I've realised my counsel in a nerd, relishing a good process, clear strategic direction and a good debate. But what I've valued most has been the people. Your worship, my fellow councillors. Gosh, you're a frustrating bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost plenty of battles around the council table, but I still love you all because you feel deeply, you fight fairly most of the time and you leave the argument in the chamber. We genuinely are all good friends and looking at the dysfunction some other councils deal with, I think that's something we can be proud of. While the last of the summer wine corner has done a brilliant job of keeping things jovial, it does belie the sadness of a missing voice and an empty seat. Ross's energy and enormous grin have been missed this year. He genuinely cared, he loved life and he was a bloody good counsellor. Working with staff has been a real highlight. We have some great skills and personalities within council. We've had some laughs and so many have go, gone above and beyond to help. And I want to say that it's noticed and it's appreciated. A few special mentions. Firstly, the group managers of my committee, Lisa and Roger. Thank you for having an open door, at times listening to me vent, and for the hours you've spent trying to bring me up to speed on the topic of the day. No easy task. And I can't forget Paul, who's always measured and wise with a fantastic dry sense of humour. Brings me to Leanne. You have been a godsend. I don't know, I don't think I would have made it without you. So thank you. Ainsley, thank you for everything you do. At time you will roll, there's a striking resemblance to a cat herdler, herder. <laughs> Alex, I think you've been thrown in the deep end and I'm pleased you swam so well. 
you've helped helped breathe some life into this place. I've loved your vision and spark, but you really do have your work cut out for you. The last three years, three terms have been filled with highlights. The standout for ones for me were the kids' bike park down at the harbour, getting into the ring for the courtside punch charity boxing event, which I didn't win. <laughs> My stint on LGNZ National Council, the fantastic results of the Museum and Archive Project, and speaking at this year's Local Government New Zealand National Conference. I was so proud to bring our story to the national stage. In Waitaki, we have an incredibly community-minded way of looking at things. We seek our own solutions. We don't wait for central government to swoop in and save us, and for that we should be proud. That is why I'm a huge believer in the transformation program and the future for local government work. They absolutely go hand in hand. Waitaki is being held up as a leader in the wellbeing space, an example of a different way of operating. We are seen as a community who isn't afraid to try something new, but we have the ability to do so much more. Helen and our community development team, alongside the Stronger Waitaki Coalition, plays a leading role in helping us identify and address our gaps in our services with more resource and longer term contracts they can build on this success. The Future for Local Government Review gives us a unique opportunity to reimagine how the community could look if we set our own destiny. And the Transformation Programme gives us the tool to be more responsive to these opportunities. I really hope the new council sees the value in this work. It's an exciting but daunting time for a new council. I'll be cheering on the art gallery project from the sidelines, as well as the much needed event centre. Let's get it built. Finally, your worship. Thank you for your support and for keeping me around as your deputy for so long. We've had a whole lot of laughs, we've headbutted on many things, but I've never once doubted your commitment to the job and to Waitaki. We're lucky to have you. Um, I bid a fond farewell to the council chamber. It's been a lot of fun, but it's time to move on. I'm looking forward to being Mel again. <laughs> <laughs> so for those watching online we're just uh giving flowers to the, each of the three retiring councillors um and i just need to say some words to mel so thank you for your kind words um yeah butting heads was always a good way of you keeping me in check and making sure that i stay um in touch with reality and sometimes or just seeing your point of view um and didn't always appreciate it at the time uh and would have liked you to vote the way i wanted <laughs> you to vote sometimes but equally it was really good to have you as deputy for the last six years and to um yeah basically have someone who could would stand up to me and um Give me some good advice when I needed it, but also be there, be reliable, uh, stand in for me when I needed it most of the time. Um, and, uh, you know, just do, be relied on to do a really, really good job. Um, your chairing of the various, uh, the committee in various iterations um, and so on has also been like with, with the other two. Uh, it's been, you've been de dependable there you've done a great job you've worked well with staff and uh you know just recognizing them the way you have today i think is uh you know it, it's very important um but it's a side of you which i think uh, everyone really appreciates is that you do see those other things that need to be said so so well done and thank you very much and all the very best to you as you Head off to bowling, bagpiping, and fishing, <laughs> or whatever it is that you're going to do in your retirement from public life. <laughs>
Um, I'm sure it won't be uh, possibly at least two of those things, but anyway, all the very best. Thank you very much for being a great deputy and for being a great friend. Um, and with that, that finishes our meeting. Uh, so thank you very much to everyone who's uh, been part of it, whether it's been here in the chamber, um, whether it's been online uh, or just supported us generally. So thank you to all councillors uh, as we close out this term. Thank you very much. I meant what I said earlier about being a, a really great team. Uh, you've been fantastic and uh, we're going to miss those who are retiring um, and for the rest of us who are seeking re-election we'll see see what what happens over the weekend and um, hope to see you all next week thank you do clear the meeting close